Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Well, I've got to put my mask into my pocket while she's doing so you can actually hear me. Find your pocket and catch it so it's okay. Um, well, welcome to All Saints this morning and um, for our service of, of morning prayer. We'll be using the green morning prayer booklets and the, the, seat, the sheet with this morning's psalm on it. So, as we turn to page two in the uh, service box. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our prayers and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of his sins, that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent. The kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Saying together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And could we all stand, please, to say together the shorter form of the Benedicite, which is on page 39 in the green box. <coughs> Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you angels of his. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all peoples on earth. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. O people of God, bless the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless, Bless the Lord, you, O you, of the bright spirit. Bless, Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing and praise and exalt him forever. The night is past, and the day lies up before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And our psalm, which is on the sheet, which we'll say a verse about, so I'll say one verse and then you respond with the next verse. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his mercy is over all his creatures. The Lord upholds all those who fall, and lifts up all those who are bowed down. Our eyes will always upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. Our hearts will always be upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand, and all things living, and fill all things living with plenty. The Lord is righteous in all things living. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all those who call upon him faithfully. The Lord watches over 
for those who love him, so the wicked shall he destroy. My mouth shall sing the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh that is holy name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please stick for our reading. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 to 5. God's offer of mercy. The Lord says, Come, everyone who is thirsty, here is water. Come, you that have no money, buy corn and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, it will cost you nothing. Why spend money on what does not satisfy? Why spend your wages and still be hungry? Listen to me and do what I say, and you will enjoy the best food of all. Listen now, my people, and come to me. Come to me and you will have life. I will make a lasting covenant with you and give you the blessings I promised to David. I made him a leader and commander of nations, and through him I showed them my power. Now you will summon foreign nations. At one time they did not know you, but now they will come running to join you. I, the Lord your God, the Holy God of Israel, will make all this happen. I will give you honour and glory. This is the word of the Lord. God. And the New Testament reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 9, also verses 1 to 5. I am speaking the truth. I belong to Christ and I do not lie. My conscience, ruled by the Holy Spirit, also assures me that I am not lying. When I say, how great is my sorrow. How endless the pain in my heart. For my people, my own flesh and blood, for their sake I could wish that I myself were under God's curse and separated from Christ. They are God's people. He made them his children and revealed his glory to them. He made his covenants with them and gave them the law. They have the true worship. They have received God's promises. They are descended from the famous Hebrew ancestors, and Christ, as a human being, belongs to their race. May God, who rules over all, be praised forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. When Jesus heard the news about John, he left there in a boat and went to a lonely place by himself. The people heard about it, and so they left their towns and followed him by land. Jesus got out of the boat, and when he saw the large crowd, his heart was filled with pity for them, and he healed their sick. That evening, his disciples came to him and said, It's already very late, and this is a lonely place. Send the people away, and let them go to the villages to buy food for themselves. They don't have, they don't have to leave, answered Jesus. You yourselves give them something to eat. All we have here are five loaves and two fish, they replied. Then bring them here to me, Jesus said. He ordered the people to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up to heaven and gave thanks to God. He broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. The disciples gave them to the people. Everyone ate and had enough. Then the disciples took the twelve baskets. Then the disciples took up the twelve baskets full of what was over. The number of men who ate was about five thousand not counting the women and children. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise you, Lord. Lord. So 
we say together the um, Benedictus, the Gospel Canticle on page 6. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised the Lord to save them from our enemies, from the hands of all the haters, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy in Christ in his sight, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. You'll go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of all their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness, and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated. Sometimes, the Good News Translation, which we use here in all saints, is criticised for not really being accurate enough. However, I think there are times when it actually really hits the mark. I think one example of this is in today's Gospel reading. Some of the more traditional translations, such as the NRSV, say that when Jesus saw the crowd, he had compassion on them. And whilst this is perfectly accurate, I think it doesn't really carry the impact of what the original Greek word means. The New English Bible says his heart went out to them, which gets off the idea a bit better. Now, the Good News translation says that Jesus' heart was filled with pity for them. The thing is, Herod Antipas, who was the ruler of Galilee, had heard reports about Jesus and the paranoia that made his father, Herod the Great, execute the babies in Bethlehem, started to show itself in his son. Herod, all, Herod had already executed John the Baptist. But when he heard about Jesus, he speculated whether Jesus might be John the Baptist, raised from the dead. It was in reaction to this news that Jesus went to a lonely place to be by himself. How much he was mourning John's death, how much he was worried about Herod's interest in his own ministry, we will never know. What we do know is that he wanted to be on his own to pray about the situation. So he got into a boat and crossed the lake to a place far from any towns and villages. But Jesus wasn't going to get his quiet time. The problem with crossing a boat, crossing a lake in a large boat, or crossing, even crossing a large lake in a boat, is that everyone on the shore can see where you're going. Crowds from all the towns and villages around went to the lake, went around the lake, and were cropped along the shore to meet Jesus when he landed. So, when Jesus saw this, when he saw the crowd meeting him, his heart was filled with pity for them. Now the Greek word for, this, for Jesus' reaction, which I won't even attempt to pronounce, it's got an awful lot of consonants stuck together, comes from the meat, its root meaning is to do with the guts or the belly. So this idea of pity or compassion, it wasn't something mild, it was a gut-wrenching feeling. It fills the whole body, physically, in a way that could not be ignored. It was a passion for those in need that demanded a response from the very centre of his being. This is a very human Jesus, driven to respond to human needs with a love that is truly divine. 
In today's Gospel story, Matthew tells us that Jesus responded to the crowd by healing their sick. In Mark's Gospel, Jesus had pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. In the feeding of the 4,000, Jesus had compassion for the crowd because they had been with him for three days and had nothing to eat. The same word is also used for Jesus' reaction in healing miracles and also in several parables. In all these stories, the reaction is immediate and practical. The emotional reaction is followed by a practical, constructive and helpful response. Healing, teaching and feeding all met the needs of the people. Jesus, Jesus responded both emotionally and practically to the needs of the people he met. Now, to be honest, I often find that my reactions don't seem quite as clear or as fruitful as those of Jesus in these stories. And hearing other people's stories, I don't think I'm the only one. Sometimes we can be frustrated about them because we don't know what we can or should do. The many needs of the world may leave us with a sense of compassion fatigue. In the midst of all this, how can we know where God is pointing us? What do we do when we feel just overwhelmed with pity and completely helpless? How do we manage when our hearts go out to too many people? And even more, what do we do when we feel emotionally numb? unable to feel for anyone around us. I think the first thing to remember is that Jesus did not always just react to what was happening around him. At the very start of their story, Jesus wanted to be by himself, to really reflect on and pray about the news he received about Herod and John. Several times in the Bible, we hear that Jesus went to places where he could be alone to pray. Although we don't know very much about how he prayed or what he said, we do know that he prayed before important events, such as choosing the twelve apostles and before his arrest. Being in tune with his father's will was a major priority for him. Jesus also knew the Hebrew scriptures well. He could call to mind relevant passages and quotations that could help him in various situations. He also knew when other people were misusing scripture and quoting out of context. This grounding in the written word of God helped him react to what was going on around him in a way that was in line with, what God, with how God is revealed in the Bible. And I think that this example of regular prayer and the good knowledge of the Bible is a great help when we need to know how to react to situations. The thing about being spontaneous is that actually it requires a lot of preparation. Because I think it's when we keep in touch with God through prayer that the Holy Spirit can speak through our fear and frustration and feed our love and compassion. And I think it's when we know the Bible well that the Holy Spirit can bring to mind the guidance from Scripture that we need. And like Jesus, it's through this grounding that the Holy Spirit can both fire and direct our compassion for others and turn it into the sort of practical help that Jesus gave. We all have different gifts and con can contribute in different ways. It's working with our gifts and with the guidance of the Spirit that turns that compassion into the joy of meeting the needs we see. Jesus' heart was filled with the pity for the crown. And may God open our eyes to the needs of the world 
and show each of us our particular role in meeting those needs. Amen. Please stand and turn to page seven in the green book. We'll say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers. <coughs> Lord Jesus, you are the bread of heaven giving light to the world. You fill our emptiness with your goodness. You come to our weakness with your strength. Come, refresh, renew, restore us. Jesus Christ our Lord, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives in glory everlasting. Amen. The response in our intercessions, for I say, Lord, you are the bread of life. The response is, feed us now and evermore. Lord, you are the bread of life. Feed us now and evermore. Father, we pray that your church may hunger and thirst after righteousness. May your church seek to care for and feed the hungry in spirit. May we seek out the lost and those who feel they're in deserted places. Show us how to bring the light of the gospel to those who are lonely. And help us build up our community despite the need for social distancing at this time. Lord, you are the bread of life. Feed us now and evermore. We remember before you the starving peoples of our world and those who suffer from famine, poverty or war. We pray for all refugees and those forced to leave their homes. We bring before you the Rohingya living in Bangladesh. We pray for effective peace in Yemen, so humanitarian relief can be effective. We pray that all governments, and all with authority and influence, can work together to find a safe home for everyone. Lord, you are the bread of life. Jesus. We give thanks for those who have fed and cared for us. We pray for all who work to bring us food. Remember all who have shown compassion and tenderness. Lord, bless our loved ones, our homes and our communities. Be with those who we love but cannot meet at this time and teach us how we can care for one another at a distance. Lord, you are the bread of life. Feed us now and evermore. We pray for all who feel drained and empty, all who have no energy or strength. Have compassion on the weak, the weary, the harassed and the helpless. We pray for all who are suffering because of the pandemic, whether physically, mentally, or economically. We 
pray for Rose Yvonne Fox, Maya Bond, Linda Ellis, Sheila Roach, Mary Doyle, John Benbow, Max Barton and his dad John, Lucy Heath, Bridget Britton, and Margaret Scripps. Lord, you are the bread of life. Feed us now and evermore. We give thanks for those who no longer hunger or thirst, for they have been refreshed in your kingdom. May we look forward to the day when we share with them in the glory that is everlasting. Lord, you are the bread of life. Feed us now and evermore. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Wardens, are there any notices? Only for the collection. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, uh, Anita knows I never remember the collection. Um, there's a plate at the front. Um, if you want to place your offering in there, um, please do so. Um, in fact, actually, what we'll do is have a slight time now where people can bring forward and actually put in their offering. Then I'll finish the rest in the next. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.